Welcome to Newport Bay Plants 101. I'm Terry and I'm a naturalist here with the Newport Bay Conservancy. Uh, today we'll be in the spans of three miles along the back bay. You'll be introduced to approximately 250 varieties of plant, native California plants and six ecosystems. Uh, the marine ecosystem, the mud flat, salt marsh, freshwater marsh, riparian, and the upland. Part of what makes this a diverse eco uh, environment is the Mediterranean climate. The hot, dry summers and the mild, wet winters make that possible. Beginning with the marine ecosystem, uh, of course that is the Pacific Ocean, which is to the south of where we are. And most plants there are algae, they're seaweeds, sea lattice, uh, and the most important, phytoplankton. As the tide recedes and ebbs, uh, the exposed, the mud flats. Uh, you may not see it, but in the mud flats there are algae and as well as the phytoplankton, uh, which makes uh, food for those worms and uh, mollusks and crustaceans that the shorebirds enjoy. When the tide ebbs, not all of the water recedes, and so you have some plants that are still submerged in the salt water. Those are called halophytes. In the salt marsh, as you look out into the bay, you're going to find that cord grass is there. It can grow up to four feet tall. Uh, it is the uh, favored habitat, uh, habitat of the Ridgeway Rail. Uh, it makes its nest there. And a uh, point of interest is it will weave its nest and anchor it to the cord grass so the tide will not carry it away. And then in addition, since it's tall, it will loop the grass over the top and create a protection for its nest and eggs. Uh, as you come closer to the shore, uh, you'll come into pickleweed. Pickleweed is uh, also a halophyte, and um, it is the favorite habitat of an endangered bell-beamed uh, savanna sparrow. Uh, the way that it deals with the salt is that it pushes it to its extremities, to the tips, and as it uh, collects that salt and fills up, it will dry up and drop off. Alongside the pickleweed, you'll also see saltwort. Uh, in a like manner, it has an adaptation that allows it to collect salt in a, an organelle called a vacuole, where it accumulates the salt, and then uh, when it's full, that leaf will drop off. Um, along that same area close to the shore is the salt grass and the shore grass. Uh, both those uh, plants have salt glands on the surface and they collect the salt and as they fill, uh, they will excrete the salt pretty much as you and I do, we sweat it out. Um, as you move away from the shore, uh, the soil is also salty and so you'll find uh, salt bush. It has a salt gland as well and collects the salt and will excrete it or sweat it out. The best place to see those halophytes is at Big Canyon, which is just down the road. Across from Big Canyon, you'll come across the freshwater marsh environment, which is usually a pond, a bog, or a swamp. There you'll find the accumulation of freshwater, and the two signature plants found there will be the cattail, which is that corn dog hanging upside down on the plant, as well as bulrush, sometimes referred to as tule. Uh, again, it's an accumulation of fresh water. Those plants have adjusted because they have deep roots. Usually adjacent to the freshwater marsh, you'll find a riparian ecosystem. It is a seasonal ecosystem. Its water is fresh. It is a result of the runoff from the local developments. Uh, you'll usually find trees that have deep roots there, such as the sycamore. Uh, the cottonwood, the arroyo, we have both the uh, arroyo willow and the black willow. Um, and you'll also see some wild roses growing in there, as well as a beautiful plant called the mansa, yerba mansa. Our last ecosystem is the upland ecosystem, which is where we are right now in Back Bay. Uh, those plants are drought tolerant and they have adaptations such as light colored leaves, small waxy leaves. Uh, some of them become drought deciduous, deciduous as you can see behind me. They lose their leaves completely. They look like they're dead. 
uh, but it, that is an adaptation that allows them to re, uh, store water and to survive. Uh, you usually see the prickly pear, the chola pear, uh, chola cactus. Um, something unique to the prickly pear is the coach, uh, cochil scale, which is uh, usually a white scale on the back of the pad of a prickly pear. And if you squish it, you'll get that red color. Uh, it's actually been used as a dye. Uh, the Native Americans use that. Um, you'll also see um, deciduous plants such as the bush sunflower, which is larval food for our butterflies. In fact, a couple of years ago, we had a painted lady butterfly migration come through. It was spectacular. Uh, you have the bladder pod, uh, also drought deciduous. And one of the bugs that favors this habitat is the harlequin beetle. It looks like black patent leather and has this beautiful intricate design it actually will eat the flowers the pods and the bark of the uh, bladder pod uh, in addition to those cactus uh, of prickly pears and the chola uh, and the deciduous drought deciduous plants uh, we have the sages there's white sage black sage and the signature coastal sagebrush, the California sagebrush is very aromatic. After the first rain, it will bloom and you can smell it. Uh, it's very fragrant. Um, sometimes you will see the toyon berry. It's an ornamental tree and it's known for its dark green leaves and its dark red berries. Um, the story goes that when the first settlers came here and they saw this tree, it was winter and it was blooming, uh, they called it Hollywood. The word town of Hollywood got its name from this Toyon berry tree. In addition to uh, pollutants that entered the bay from the San Diego Creek that threatened our plants and native life, uh, we have non-native plants that are invasive, such as the Brazilian pepper tree, which are the two tall trees in, that you see behind me. Uh, they are non-native and what they do in it is they rob our native plants of their natural habitat. They're unable to grow. Uh, in addition to the Brazilian pepper tree, we have uh, pampas grass. You'll see it along the bay as well. Uh, on the west bluff, you'll come across black mustard, which can grow as tall as, as I am. And also, Along the bay side, you'll come across giant reed, which is uh, arundo grass. All of these plants threaten to take real estate away from our native plants. Right now, uh, the Newport Bay Conservancy is working in the Big Canyon area to uh, eradicate, remove those Brazilian pepper trees and restore natural native plant life there. Um, that is something that you and I can participate in. The Conservancy welcomes volunteers that uh, can come two days a week from uh, September through February to remove those uh, invasive plants. Another plant that threatens <laughs> our uh, endangered uh, least tern is the Algerian sea lavender. Uh, volunteers regularly go out into the bay and remove that small ground plant that threatens the nesting ground of the least tern. Uh, those are ways that you can volunteer and if you want more information on in terms of the plants that are along the back bay or anywhere around the bay, you can go to newportbay.org where you'll also find opportunities to volunteer.